tell us who you are and, and where you're from and just, you know, a couple of basic facts about yourself. Okay. I am Andrew Gutenberg. I am from Bozeman. I grew up in a little tiny town called Glasgow, Montana. And that's where I started birding at about age eight. And, and that was how many years ago? I'm 22 now. Almost 22. And uh, I'm studying to be an art teacher right now at Montana State University. Um, I work uh, part-time as an illustrator and, and sell artwork around Montana. When did you start? You started birding at age eight. When did you start drawing or painting birds? I still had my first bird drawing, which was a woodpecker, probably a pileated. And I was about, I think about two years old. Okay. And I started drawing just birds when I was about 12. Hmm, okay. Yeah. So, uh, painting or illustration first, then an interest in birds, then a combination of the two. Yep. Okay, cool. Yep, for sure. And, um, let's see. Now, you, um, before... The, the Common Nighthawk, the 2013 ABA Bird of the Year, you did another cover for Birding Magazine, and uh, that was a snowy plover, right? Yes, it was. Right. And yeah. that was that your that was your only other birding cover, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, how did that come about? Um, Ted contacted me with a big list of options of a cover, because uh, there were a lot of interesting articles in that magazine, he said, hey, uh, would you like to do a snowy plover? And I said, I've never seen one, but I'll do one for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how that came about. That's great. That's great. And, um, but presumably you have seen common nighthawks. Yes, I have seen many common nighthawks. <laughs> when, when you, uh, when, when we and Ted approached you about doing the bird of the year, um, and, and said it was a common nighthawk, um, what, you know, what, as an artist, as a bird artist, what seemed to you to be um, sort of the positives, but then also the challenges about depicting that species? I mean, what about that opportunity made you say, wow, this is something I can sink my teeth into, and what made you say, geez, I don't know how I'm going to quite handle this, that, or the other? Yeah, I'd say the biggest challenge was the fact that when you see them, you don't see them up close. You see them flying up in the sky, and I wanted to have them in a way that was the way that I always think about them, which is like sunset, silhouettes, um, and that just doesn't really work for a magazine cover, so I wanted to, uh, yeah, have some detail. And and that was also a challenge because detail is, is hard to, <laughs> to depict, so. And Common Nighthawk has a lot of detail. Right. I mean, when you get close to one, it's not this sort of gray-brown <clears throat> monotone yep. thing with a couple of white slashes here and there. It's every feather has has its own character. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. I wanted to um, ask you um, about the um, the decal art where you just did sort of a bust, you know, a headshot, um, if you will, of the common nighthawk. Um, we really wound up liking that a lot because, um, well, uh, to put it bluntly, I think a lot of us have the feeling that people may look at it and not even be sure what species it is. Mm -hmm. um, could you just tell us a little bit about why you decided to approach that the way you did? Okay. Um, I did it with gouache, where most of my detail work I do with colored pencils. And I felt like uh, doing the head up close would allow me to loosen up a little bit. And uh, um, I think it has some really interesting colors in it that you don't see when you're looking at a whole bird. And uh, so to get the pattern and the, and the interesting colors, I zoomed in on its head. And, and I thought that the, the profile of it would be better for a portrait, just showing that nice little bill and uh, just the really interesting structure like around its eyes and, and its gape and they're just unique birds. Speaking, of the, speaking <clears throat> of the gape, why did you choose to show it with the mouth open? Because their mouth is really impressive to me. <laughs> and I didn't want it all the way open because they're a little bit grotesque looking honestly. Yep, 
Yeah, uh, they, when you actually see the full extent of a night jar's mouth, it, it is. It's almost, uh, there's, uh, it's bizarre. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. So, uh, but yeah, we thought that was a really interesting choice too and, and really liked it. But um, I, I agree with you, the, the colors and the overall looseness of the sticker art are, um, are really interesting. And, and kind of a contrast to the, you know, bit tighter, more precise um, work on the, on the cover painting. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to say anything about um, Common Nighthawks or, you know, the specific Common Nighthawk that you drew, anything about that you were, you know, particularly trying to bring out or details that you were worried about getting right or any of that? Yeah, I originally you can, you planned... Can, why don't you pick it up and hold it up for the camera for a sec. So I originally planned the drawing for the Nighthawk to be viewed from below, but the pattern on the back of it with its tail, um, I, uh, I really wanted to show that and you don't really see the rest of the bird well um, uh, from below with the, uh, with the tail spread. From below, I, I think of their wings swept back and pointed, and uh, I, I like their their full spread view. So I chose to do it from above, and uh, and I chose a scene that would be normal for what I've experienced with nighthawks um, in northeast Montana, where I grew up, is where the most common of the places I've lived, and uh, um, just farm fields, probably full of mosquitoes and uh, standing water and uh, and then also wanted to have a little bit of a human element in it so I included the railroad crossing and a little dirt road and yeah that was my thought process <laughs> okay settle a settle a not exactly a bet but a question for us uh, what time of day is that meant to be it's supposed to be probably about eight o'clock in the middle of summer okay so a, a lingering summer evening mm -hmm. in the upper well mid latitudes i guess we're right about at 45 here aren't we right <laughs> in montana <laughs> and um and then the, the so the crossroads uh the railroads was was meant just primarily human element um kind of suggesting maybe that this bird is uh is is a bird that is comfortable with human habitation to some extent but mm -hmm. kind of walks that line <clears throat> Yeah, and I think that the ditches and like man-made habitat around uh, northeast Montana is kind of the places I most associate them with because there isn't standing water naturally except the prairie potholes. Um, there are how many other common nighthawks in the picture? There are five small ones in the background. Okay, and any rhyme or reason for how they're distributed or what they're doing? Yeah, they're just a uh, loose flock flying around and I wanted to show the other uh, positions that I considered for the, the main bird in the cover and uh, mostly viewed from below. So, yep, they're just silhouettes with little white wing patches. <laughs> cool. Do you have any, like, you know, specific memories um, around common nighthawks, like either the first time you saw them or a time that they really impressed or surprised you or... Um, do you just sort of, you know, have uh, a bunch of little tiny experiences that, that inform? Yeah, no huge standout experience, but I just, I do remember ever since I was a little kid, just stepping outside in the late summer when they're starting to gather up to go south and uh, just, you don't realize anything's going on and you look up in the sky and they're just everywhere and it's just 50 of them just all around and then you start listening to them and just watching them bounce around and yeah it's it's pretty wonderful <laughs> what's next for you what uh, what in in terms of your bird art um, what interests you at the moment or what areas or places or groups of species would you be interested in in tackling okay well I am a huge fan of hummingbirds hummingbirds are just my first love and I've stuck with them and uh, um, I'm working on a project right now drawing all the hummingbirds of Costa Rica. Um, right now I'm just working on pen and ink studies of them and uh, we'll see where that goes. But uh, Someday I want to do a book of the hummingbirds of the world. and uh, So that's still pretty much in the thought process right now. But we'll see where that goes. 
Any thoughts of doing a Gutenberg bird Bible? I think that is a great idea. I've never thought of it before, but uh, I, I'm open to considering that. There you go. Um, and do you have a spark bird? Was there a single bird or encounter or day you spent out that you sort of crossed the line from not quite a birder to, to be in one, or was it more gradual with you? I do remember the first time that I picked up a bird book to find out what a bird was. I was out in, uh, in the fall just hanging out in the yard and a bunch of tiny little birds came through and uh, I thought, what are those? And I was just watching them, they were very tame and I uh, went to my grandma's house and found her bird book and flipped through it till I found there were golden crowned kinglets and uh, don't get to see a lot of them in Montana but every time I do it's, it's good memory. Which bird book was it? It was... I think it was the American Bird Conservancy. The All the Birds the All the book? All the Birds book. Right, yeah. okay, cool. Yep.